Boy, we got a fun project today. We're gonna start building a carpenter's workbench. And I've been online, I've looked at a lot of different designs and uh, watched a few videos, but this is kind of a personal choice. So um, I think after 40 years of doing carpenter work, it's probably time I built myself a bench. So this is gonna be fun. I'm looking forward to this. So let me get that thing uncovered, get them bicycles moved out of the way and put a new blade on that saw and get rolling. All right, our, all our leg and stretcher material is cut down. Rough cuts. And so uh, I got it stacked up here with some uh, quarter inch sticks that I cut. And uh, we'll let that sit probably, I guess about a week or so. That came out of the lows. It was, in it was inside, so it wasn't like it was sitting in a lumber yard. So it's not gonna be as wet as some of them. I have been to the mill and picked up the material for the workbench. All hard maple, it's a good two inches thick, man. It's pretty stuff, look at that. <clears throat> so first thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna cut this down to size, bring it here, stack it on these saw horses. Twelve of these, three and a quarter, and hopefully, by the time we get finished milling all this, that we have a proud three inches for the thickness of our pitch top. If you need a dozen of them. Well, that was a chore. <laughs> Anyway, here's all our wood. It's a, our hard maple. It's all ripped down. And uh, this stuff was kill dried, but I think I'm going to uh, clear a place out and go ahead and let this acclimate to the shop. Let it sit, I don't know, a week or so. So that's a job, especially by yourself. Good morning. Our first chore this morning is to set up the joiner and we're going to put a face on all our maple. Then we're going to roll the freshly faced side against the fence and we're going to put an edge on it. That is going to make a huge mess and uh, take a whole bunch of time. So I'm going to start off by setting the joiner up and an outfeed roller and we'll get started on that. Okay, I'm about halfway through my pile of uh, maple, and I'm gonna show you um, how I do this. It may not be how other people do it, but it's the way I do it. So, uh, my first pass, obviously, is gonna be going through and flattening the board. And I typically put, if it's bowed like this, I put the bow down and clip it on the ends until the center hits. Second pass, it's critical that you take that finished end and hold tight against the fence because what you're trying to do is plane a 90 degree angle on this board. So let me put a mask on and I'll give you an example. You see this edge pass is critical. Tight to the back fence, 
keep it square. So as you're milling along with your lumber, keep a little square here handy so you can check. Make sure you're getting the results that you want and that you don't have to adjust your machine or maybe the way you're even doing something. So that's easier to check now than it is to uh, try to redo it later. Okay, we're about to do our last pass uh, on the thickness with this top will end. And it looks like, looks like it's going to end right at three inches. That's at three and an eighth now. Somehow or another, this one came out a little narrow, so I'm gonna set it at three. Um, might have to roll that one over and uh, put the rough end, uh, rough salt in at the bottom. But um, one more pass, probably at about three and a sixteenth, and then um, we'll see what they look like, and then we're gonna roll them over and do the one rough side left, and we'll be just about ready to start making a top. and we should be good on the thickness. I still have a little bit of ugly showing here. So I'm gonna drop it down just ever so slight and uh, run it one more time and see what we got. What a chore that was. Um, our maple has all been milled, it's been dressed. It looks See the light, looks pretty decent. So my next chore is gonna be stacking this up the way I want it to be glued. But uh, that's a good day's work, I figure. Going from this, this so what can I tell you about doing that I will say less is more when you're jointed um, don't try to take too much out it's nothing like getting a board just about flat and because you're in a hurry you got to got it taken off more than it should it blows a chunk of the wood out not good so uh, less is more, put on the headphones and just keep running it through a little at a time until it's flat. And then uh, secondly, when you put the edge on it, make sure that that flat edge is riding against the fence the entire time. So you end up with a nice square board like that. Um, also, if, it, uh, if you try to take too much off at one time, it seems, uh, at least in my case, it, it would it'll clog the it would clog up your vacuum system. So less is more. Take your time, enjoy the process, um, and just be a part of what it is you're doing. And then uh, secondly, I use this. Uh, and by the way, I'm I'm using a six-inch uh, Dewalt, not Dewalt, but. Um, Delta, I don't know why I couldn't think of that. Uh, joiner, obviously if I had a bigger one, eight, 10, 12 inches, that would really be super nice. But that does a good job, you just gotta, um, you gotta take your time. Go slow, enjoy the process, like I say. And then again, I'm using the uh, DeWalt surface planer and that's another one. Less is more, a little bit at a time, and uh, you will end up with some really, really nice looking stock. Uh, just as, as nice as you're gonna get from any mill using these tools. And uh, 
you give yourself a good workout and uh, and you'll have fun doing it so next I'm gonna take and uh, set up these benches and I'm gonna go through and select which pieces I want on the outside which pieces go up which pieces go down uh, check the grain make sure all that look is good and then I'm gonna mark them for biscuits because I don't want to be trying to tap these boards up and down keeping them flat so uh, we'll biscuit them all uh, using the top of the bench to index the biscuit that way when I put it together and glue it up the biscuits will pull everything pretty much flush on the top and uh, then comes the madness of gluing it so let's let's do that I'm gonna set this bench up and uh, We'll see what our, our top's gonna look like. Okay, doke. Okay, I got these things clamped up and they look pretty good. <clears throat> got uh, one here on this edge I ain't real happy with. See a little bit of snipe, so I'm gonna uh, take that out and run it through the planer real easy. But, goodness gracious, what a beautiful top, huh? And I got a little bit of chip out right there, but by the time I get this together and get it sanded and smoothed out, that will probably be gone. So I'm going to do that now. I'm going to mark these about every 12 inches for biscuits. And I'll just about be ready for the glue up part, which I'm not looking forward to. It. Pretty messy. But, uh, so far, so good. Okay, folks, let's check our top out. So far, so good. I have laid this out for the biscuits. Mark the center, it's kind of hard to say, but I marked the center so now I'm going the right direction. Also put a pyramid, and if you don't know, that's a biscuit, and we have a little machine that cuts a slot. And we gotta put one on each, that's what these marks are for, one on each side. And then as we're gluing this up, these biscuits will be placed in the center of the board. And we'll help line them up, keep them flush. So that's, I think about 120 <laughs> biscuits. But hopefully it'll pay off. Hopefully it'll make uh, glue up easier. And I'm gonna get Lisa involved in that. I'm gonna get her out here and get her all messy. So I'm gonna start the biscuit joining process. And then uh, I'll get back with you in a minute. Show you how this little biscuit works. Pretty ingenious, actually. That took uh, 30 minutes, maybe. So I think that's a small price to pay for um, the ease of assembly with all these different pieces of wood. But this piece is in here, and we got the corresponding groove there. There you go. You can see that it's absolutely perfectly flush. You can imagine you get all these things wet with glue. The last thing I want to be doing is beating them back and forth, trying to get them all flush. These biscuits will do that job. So in my opinion, it's a 30 minutes well spent. Uh, it is, however, just a little bit messy. That particular machine doesn't have a uh, 
vacuum attachment. But I guess some of the new ones might. I've had that one a long, long time, probably 25, 30 years. Okay, I'm gonna clean this mess up. About beer 30. Okay, let's have a look and see. I got my glue station set up. Plastic on the floor, six mil. Some stuff I had left over from a little project. The biscuits. Check them all out before you start gluing. You don't want to have a problem once you start the process. Like this, see here? I should have got that. Sometimes pieces of wood get stuck in there. But when you start rolling these things up, you want them to go together, no issues. So we got a couple brushes, we got a squeegee, blue bottle, which I'm getting ready to fill up, some biscuits, and a big old bottle of tight bond. So um, what we're gonna do is paint the biscuits with glue, drop them in the hole, all right? I'm gonna paint this with glue, roll it up, take uh, three simple squeeze clamps, put it together, let it set like that while we're putting the glue on this one, take the squeeze clamps off, roll this one up, connect it to the next one, put the squeeze clamps back on, right on down the line. And I'm gonna do this in two pieces. I'm gonna do half the bench. Well, actually I'm gonna do seven pieces on one side, six pieces on the other. And uh, hopefully this goes, hopefully this works with no issues. I'm not the uh, neatest person in town when it comes to paint and glue and stuff like that. So let's see how this goes. I'm gonna get it ready and uh, then I'll show you what's happening. What a chore. <laughs> All right, it's uh, oh, Saturday morning. Well, I'm out here, it's about one o'clock. So I'm gluing up the second half of this top. Um, the biscuits really do help the process, but you can see I'm being pretty tidy this time. Because last night when I went inside, I was exhausted. And I, I should have cleaned this off, just squeeze out before I went in the house and I didn't. 
and I was too tired to come back out. So I scraped this clean here. It's a job. It is a job. So hopefully I can do that without destroying my top, which I'm pretty sure I can. But, um, man, put the brakes on. Like I said earlier, enjoy the process. And uh, the tidier you are, the easier it's going to be. So we're getting close to this one. I got one more to put on. And then it will time, be time to put the two halves together. So I'm looking forward to that. Tighten this up tonight. Cut it off, put the breadboard ends on it in the morning. It's looking good. Okay, Sunday morning. I gotta get this top done because I gotta get rolling on them steps. So, um, glued the two halves together. Absolutely no problem. I'm telling you, if you take your time and mill your material properly, accurately, your glue up is a piece of cake. The only thing I'm gonna recommend is uh, the white glue. I use yellow. I was not gonna go out and buy some another gallon of glue just so I could work a little slower. So um, the second half, I was much cleaner, which made a big deal because it took about three hours to scrape the top of this thing clean and uh, not gouge the wood. But it looks pretty awesome at this point. Um, I have a little bit of straightening to do here and there. It ain't bad though. So, uh, I'm gonna do that with a belt sander with a 320 grit belt and I'm gonna show you how I'm gonna do that because I don't have one of these big long fancy planes and uh, my arm's got enough workout scraping this thing clean. Secondly, you'll see what I'm talking about. Let me shoot underneath of this. You see that glue? That is a mess. Here's the second piece I glued up. Much cleaner. So, I have an old electric plane. I'm gonna put some old blades on it. Set it real shallow, and I'm gonna get that glue off the backside using that electric plane. And just so you can see, it might be difficult to see in this camera, but we'll give it a shot. You can see there is absolutely no warp. Let's see if I can do this. No warpiness whatsoever. You can see that other. So, pretty happy with that. All right, uh, I'm gonna roll this over, set my planer up, and see if I can get the backside of this cleaned up a little bit. I'm not looking for furniture quality, obviously, but I can't leave it like that either. Let's see if I can show you what I've got going here. If I put a straight edge up across here, you see that little bit of light? So what I'm gonna do, And you can see I have a reference on what to take off. 
and I have a, uh, I do have an 80 grit paper on there because um, I don't think 320 is going to do it, but it's a, it's a worn piece of 80. It's not fresh. So um, let's take that off and then we'll check it again. Obviously, you want to keep your table long. Don't cut it to length until you get this done. Let's see what that looks like. You see that? A little bit, it's a little bit closer. So we just keep doing that till it's flat. All right, let's take a look at that. That's about mm, 15 minutes work. That's pretty decent in my book. A little high right there on that right hand side, but. The belt sander does a good job. You've got a good belt sander, one's got good balance. Uh, it does a good job. You take a very little bit off at a time so you don't get uh, carried away and destroy all that work that you put into your top. So, um, unless you're an enthusiast and have an assortment of razor sharp uh, plane, hand planes. So we're gonna move on down the line and uh, try to finish this up. Well, that's pretty good. That's pretty decent. Try to get uh, about three quarters of an inch down. Then we'll go down to the other end. Then we'll roll it over and do the front. Here's our first rabbit, about seven eighths deep. So we'll go down the other end, do that one. Then we'll roll the uh, top over and do the uh, finish side. That should be a little bit more back. All right, we got the first tongue complete. Looks pretty good. See on the edge. And I would suggest if you do, if you go this route that you put the tongue on before you cut the ends because it's gonna be easier to fit the ends to the tongue that you create than it is to try to create a tongue to fit to the end, in my honest opinion. Cutting the uh, breadboard ends. So this is finished, looks good. Just hit it with some sandpaper, knock the sharp edges off because it'll cut you. We've got a pretty good, uh, pretty good setup there for our breadboard end. So I'm gonna clean this mess up. Which look at the look at the mess. <coughs> oh my god. Anyway, I'm gonna clean up some of this mess and then. Um, Pull the table saw out and we'll start and cut down these uh, ends for the breadboard ends. Let me show you what I got going here. We installed the breadboard end. Oak pegs go all the way through. 
And I'm going to, I went ahead and did that uh, off camera so I could come up with a way to do it as accurately and as easy as possible. Um, so number one, make sure you got a super, super square stock. That is going to be critical. Secondly, we're going to um, we're going to rough out the tongue out of the board on the table saw using the uh, dado blade. Pretty good fit there. Thought you were doing that talking to yourself. No, I'm talking to this camera. <laughs> The edge is a matter of um, preference. You know, you just round it over the sanding block if you want. That's what I did on the bottom side. Uh, but I'm afraid if I left them square like that on top, I would end up knocking them edges, chunks, because of it being square like that. But I think it adds a nice little, nice touch to it. I'm gonna go check it out. It's not sharp now. Looks pretty cool. So other than other than uh, spending about 25 minutes with some 220, it's ready for uh, boiled linseed oil. So that's what will be next, and I'll just about wrap it up for this top. Okay, our workbench is about finished. What have we learned? breadboard in. Probably going to be controversial. I just didn't want to see the end grain. So that's how I decided to finish this. It's a draw bore. So when this peg goes in, it pulls this end grain, I mean this end board, towards the table. But they're slightly elongated from front to back uh, in order to allow some expansion and contraction, which I'm not too worried about that because the shop is conditioned. So we'll see how that works out, but there's going to be a lot of people that don't like that. Um, secondly, the more time, the more accurate your stock is, the easier time you're going to have gluing things up and the more accurate your table's going to be. Take the time and get them flat and square. The more time you take doing that, the better off you are. And uh, glue up. Take the time to keep it clean. I spent two and a half hours scraping glue off the top of this table. Um, I could have gone out and got white glue. It would have given me a little bit more work time. But I had the yellow glue here. I wanted to use it up. So that's what I did. If you stuck with me, appreciate it. This is quite a job. First one I ever built. Uh, looking forward to 
being able to use it. Um, if you're still here, thank you for watching and uh, consider subscribing and hanging around. All in all, this was a fun build to this point and uh, looking forward to finishing it up. Adios. Well, now comes the funnest part so far. <laughs> Putting holes in that hard maple top for these tenons.